It is Saturday, November 6th, and we actually have to do a bonus weekend news video today because there's a few brand new Nintendo Switch stories that have dropped that I really want to talk about with you all, starting with the reason that you may be seeing a Metroid movie possibility in the news, and I want to discuss where this is stemming from. Then we also have to cover the huge milestone that Skyward Sword HD just crossed because, spoiler alert, it has officially outsold its Wii original release. And the big talking point for today's video is a bad issue that continues to plague Nintendo games about them leaking in full online before their official release. What's up, nation? If it's your first time on the channel, make sure you join Sunbro Nation by subscribing below, hit the like button on this video if you enjoy it today, and make sure you turn on your bell notification icon so you're kept up to date with all the newest gaming news. Now, as I mentioned, guys, we are covering a few different stories today, and I wanna kick it off with the reason why you may be seeing the possibility of a Metroid movie in the news, and it is because the series producer himself actually says that he would love to see it happen, and we just talked about yesterday how Nintendo is, of course, investing a lot of their additional funds for from the success of the Nintendo Switch into new ventures and animation style movies is one of those. And we also have to talk about what style of movie this might be because would it be an animation or would it be live action? And you know, it's not confirmed to actually be taking place yet, but when there is a will, there is a way sometimes with these type of things. So I wanna start off this conversation around hopping over to Nintendo Life where they do actually transcribe what was said and we know the likelihood of whether or not we could potentially see a Metroid movie come out at some point in the future. Metroid Dread's producer would like to see Samus in her own movie one day. He's quoted here saying, I hope that does become a reality. If you ever wanted to see Nintendo's Metroid series get adapted to the big screen, you're not alone. During a recent interview with CNET, Metroid Dread producer Yoshia Sakamoto, who originally worked on the series as a designer, voiced his own interest in seeing Samus in cinema. He finds the idea of it very interesting and hopes it could one day become a reality. So CNET asked the question here, speaking of the recent Super Mario movie announcement, a Metroid movie would be interesting. I have no idea who'd be cast as Samus. Sakamoto responds here, so that is something very interesting. Personally, I hope that it does become a reality someday. So I do personally think that classic Nintendo franchises and big budget animation films are a perfect mix together, and I would absolutely love to see a Metroid movie if done right one day, as it could inspire a whole future generation to go back and play the classic installments in the franchise. And of course, to pull this off, we have to get Metroid Dread to sell incredibly well and Metroid Prime 4 to sell incredibly well when it's released. So if you are a Metroid fan, make sure you are supporting the game by picking up all of its installments and sharing the word with your friends. But I do think that this is an exciting topic to have and one po question I actually want to pose to you guys is what would you rather see in terms of the style of the movie because I've been seeing a lot of back and forth discussion on Twitter with some folks saying that they would much rather see a live action Metroid movie whereas others would say no you couldn't pull that off and it definitely needs to be animated so where do you fall in that camp because I think animated is the safer bet to actually stick to the lore and the history of Metroid and pull it off correctly because unless if you have some really incredible actors and some super high budget when it comes to special effects and things like that you can tend to get pulled out of things that are typically animated and then you go throw a live action film cast at it and it just does not work correctly so i would love to hear your thoughts i think i would love a live action metroid but i'm more afraid that that would get horribly messed up and it would actually be a stain on the series as opposed to something we could celebrate together and enjoy as metroid fans so i think animation is the safer bet for me but i want to hear from you guys on all things metroid movie possibilities in the comments down below now the next thing we have to talk about today is a big milestone that Skyward Sword HD indeed just crossed and that is the fact that it has outsold its original Wii release and while you know this isn't doing crazy Breath of the Wild numbers or it's not even trending to do anything insane like what Breath of the Wild accomplished with over 20 million units sold this is still now at 3.6 million total copies sold compared to the Wii's original release of 3.18 million and of course you have to keep in mind this game was just out in the middle of July we are now in November, and of course, we have not seen the holiday season actually come to pass since this game has been on retail shelves. So I do think that this number will get boosted up tremendously. As you know, there's going to be a lot of casual gamers that are in their Walmarts and Targets and Best Buys out there looking for new gifts to get. And a Zelda game, when you know you have a Zelda fan in the family, might be that perfect experience to go ahead and deliver. So I do think that it being already past the original Wii release at this point in time is a win 
win for Zelda games overall. And of course, you know, there's a lot of debate around the Switch effect, and I personally am a believer in it. I think that this game would not have sold very well if it was released on any other console with not such a large user base. And of course, the Wii did have that large user base as well. But the interesting thing about the Wii was is it was such a casual console in general. Like it was primarily marketed towards older folks that enjoyed golf games and, you know, the broad audience. Like you can play with your mom now on video games because she's going to enjoy it too because she knows how to swing at a golf ball or play bowling or whatever other Wii sports games you want to play. That's why they packaged it with the Wii when it actually originally sold. So that was definitely an interesting era to go through as a hardcore Nintendo fan, as most of the games were forced motion controls. And that's why I was happy to see them give the button option to Skyward Sword HD. And if any of you are watching this video that are Zelda fans that have not actually given it a chance yet, I would definitely encourage you to pick it up. It is a little bit different to get used to motion controls being mapped to something like the right C stick, because that does feel odd at first. But once you get past it and you actually adapt to it, if you prefer to play with button controls, it is an incredible experience. And if you like to play with motion controls, you have that option there the entire time with the Joy-Con. So this one is the origin story for the entire Legend of Zelda series. It's a very important one for story and lore understanding overall. And I could not recommend it enough to those Zelda gamers out there that want to see what created the series in terms of the story perspective and really a must play in my opinion before you go replay Ocarina of Time on the Nintendo 64 expansion pack on your Switch because it does some incredible foreshadowing for that game story and I won't spoil anything but you just need to go through the entire game and appreciate what it stacks up and lines up for the entire Zelda franchise so I would love to hear from you guys in the comments down below if you did actually complete and pick up and play through Skyward Sword HD or if it's one of the games that's maybe still on your radar that you might try to pick up on a sale this holiday season. So please share all your thoughts on everything Skyward Sword HD and Zelda related in the comments down below. Now, the last story we're talking about today is actually one that's very frustrating for me as a long term Nintendo fan, because it's really a shame to see, you know, all these companies put in hard work into their game releases and trying to keep things under wraps until everybody can enjoy it together at the same time. And in the current climate that we are in, we are seeing essentially every major Nintendo Switch game that is released in a retail format, meaning it's, of course, shipped to stores, get leaked early. And the reason behind this, if you guys don't know, is the first original batch of of switch consoles that were sold i think it was roughly over 20 million of them are able to be incredibly easily hacked and it's essentially something you can do with a paper clip and obviously i i'm not going to show you guys how to do that or anything like that but this is one of those things that does happen people do have hacked switches and while i'm not against the homebrew community at all i actually think it's a fantastic community but i do think that there is a big problem around the fact that now if you work at some retail store and you somehow get your hands on a copy early it's essentially spoiled for everyone because you start playing it on your hack switch you can then dump the game file into a file format that you can easily go upload and share on the internet where it can be pirated for free which completely screws the developers and i'm completely against that i mean you have to own your games if you want to play them and i just think it's one of those problems that continues to persist more and more and it's a shame to see it plague every single new switch release because we could potentially be talking about before too much longer major spoilers when it comes comes to games like Metroid Prime 4, Zelda Breath of the Wild 2, like you might really have to go in defense mode and about a week or two before the release of the games actually try to not look up anything related to the topic because you might actually see some story spoilers. And what this has happened with and the reason it's in the news today is Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl as we are still roughly two weeks away from those games actually being officially released from Nintendo and they are already out in the wild and there is new screen screenshots and videos being posted and also being taken down, I noticed, but we have to quickly start off this conversation by hopping over to VGC, where they do do a good job kind of detailing what has happened so far with this game's release. And of course, we will not be talking any spoilers because I personally am going to try to avoid all of that. I want to enjoy my first diamond playthrough for the first time from start to finish at this game's actual November release and not get it spoiled online with what new kinds of enhancements or pieces of the story have been added in. So let's quickly hop off over to VGC where we can read through the article together. Weeks before release, Pokemon Diamond and Pearl remakes are in the wild. Images and videos have started to appear on social media ahead of release. Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl have seemingly started to make their way into public hands two weeks before the game's official release date. 
On Saturday, one Reddit user claimed to have obtained a North American copy of the game and proceeded to post several pictures and a video of it in action. If the media is legitimate, it could suggest that the Pokemon company could be set to suffer yet more game leaks ahead of the release of one of its major Pokemon titles. The typically secretive Pokemon company has suffered from numerous high-profile leaks in recent years, which have disrupted its usual strategy of tightly controlling information on its games before their release. The most high-profile incident occurred last year when Nintendo publicly cut ties with a Portuguese website after it was found to have been behind some pre-launch Pokemon Sword and Shield leaks. In a statement, website F Nintendo, what a, what a crazy website name, uh, admitted it was responsible for uploading a series of off screen photographs which leaked multiple new unannounced Pokemon before the official release of Sword and Shield. You then have this tweet that details an image that does appear to be the official retail release of the box art for the Nintendo Switch. And then, continuing down the article, in a statement, the website claimed it had severed ties with the reviewer who leaked the Pokemon images, but accepted it would no longer receive products from Nintendo nor be invited to its events. In the US, the Pokemon Company sued unidentified individuals over further Pokemon Sword and Shield leaks prior to the game's release. In December of 2019, TCP was given permission to subpoena the identities of Discord and 4chan users allegedly behind the leaks, leaving the two platforms no choice but to hand over personal details of the individuals in question. Two men were later ordered to pay $150,000 each to the Pokemon Company for the leaked images. There is now the brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl footage that was originally up on Reddit that has now been pulled down, so apparently the Pokemon Company is aware of this and they are probably trying to chase down all that footage. Now the issue then becomes that the internet is the internet and once it is uploaded, it is there forever because somebody will have downloaded and saved this video and can continue to share it. And the bigger problem, of course, is, is they can dump this entire game file and share it around online where people can pirate it at no cost and it is a big issue that continues to plague Nintendo and the Pokemon Company and I don't know what needs to happen to actually stop this. Like maybe they go after everybody who does leak these things and there are lawsuits that cause people to be scared enough not to do it. But for the foreseeable future with the Nintendo Switch, until we talk about things like the next gen Switch, which hopefully aren't as easily as hackable out of the gate, well, we're gonna continue to see all of these things happen with retail releases until one day, I guess you could argue the only upside in my opinion of an all digital future is that it'll be a lot harder for leaks like this to actually take place because because you would need somebody internally in the organization to do it. But whenever you talk about shipping out retail boxes, obviously whoever the employees are that receive those can easily make the decision to do this. So this is a very controversial one. I wanna hear from you guys on it, on all your thoughts and opinions on really all the stories we talked about today, but specifically around this brilliant diamond and shining pearl leak being out there ahead of time. And you know what you think that Nintendo can maybe do to help fix this problem as we walk forward and don't have to have constant worries around major games from them all being spoiled ahead of their official release date. So please share all your thoughts and feelings and opinions in the comments down below before you leave the video, as I do look forward to getting a back and forth conversation started with you all around these topics. Thanks so much for watching the video today, everyone. I do truly appreciate you all sticking around until the end. I do at this point in the video want to invite you all one more time to join some bro nation. If you haven't done so already, do so by subscribing below, hit the like button on your way out. If you enjoyed it today and make sure you turn on your bell notification icon. So you're kept up to date with all the newest gaming news. That's going to do it for me, guys. I hope you all have a great day. Sunburn nation out.